Good morning. Got the hoggets here. Just got them in um, from over the road. Didn't film that because the dogs are crazy and yeah, it's just chaos at the moment. <laughs> they haven't had a lot of work. Um, but yeah, the hoggets in here. So the, uh, what are we, about the 5th, 6th of uh, September, they're due to lamb 1st of October. So they need their, uh, probably a week late, but need their first uh, five and one. And then they'll get a crutch and we'll tag the twins. So starting to get all their stuff sorted for when they lamb. Um, and then shearing's booked in for another week or so. Um, but no, we'll, uh, we'll crack into this. What we're doing here, we've got our five and one, just um, Ultravac, no selenium or B12. We're going to give that to them uh, next time because these hoggets have never had B12 before, so they need two. They need a just like the heifers, they need a sensitizer, and then four to six weeks later, they need a booster. So, we're just going through and doing this. So then what we're doing as we come back down the race is we've got our tags here, flock tags. None of these hoggets have tags yet. And because these are due to get shorn, oh. Oh, uh, where was I? Uh, so we're tagging the twins. So the ones with the orange dots on their back, they, these are all due to get shorn. So that mark will get shorn off. Um, we find, yeah, just, Tag them and then and then go through and tag everything else at um, at weaning works really really well. And then also just picking out any that need crutching that are really really bad, just so we can crutch them now. So when it comes time to shear next week, we just run them straight in the shear. So we're just using flexi tags from All Flex. Um, we have been putting EIDs in the ewes, but yeah, that's um, it's a cost and. We weren't really utilising it as much as uh, we could have, so um, we weren't collecting the amount of data that we were hoping to collect and then using that data, so it's um, a bit of a wasted, wasted cost really. So going back to just the normal flexi tags, which are cheaper. So just finished them up uh, just in time for Matt from Tipari to turn up. So we've we had the old um, one of the other tailing shoots here um, for last lambing, last tailing season. And then if you didn't know, Tipari have just brought out the company who um, used to make these vet markers. So now you guys are making vet markers. So welcome yeah. Matt. Yeah. Great, yeah, so yeah, we're making, yeah, we've, so we've bought that, that uh, company now and we're, we're going to begin making them. Actually, we've got the first lot of them off of the, um, off of the zinc platers now to start a new batch, so yep. um, yeah, yeah, and it's a pretty awesome product actually, and they'll go really well for us. Yeah, so um, we'll just have a look at it. Uh, what's the, so the thing that, that 
like I've seen these before, um, the thing that really excites me is there's a job of putting the chemical on the lamb after tailing that is now mechanised. So, yeah, that's right. So basically, here you've got a standard drench gun here, hooked and just tubes up to this nozzle here. So when you pull it over to uh, tilt the lamb out, as it rolls over, it'll um, press the drench gun and, and spray as it flies out. So. Um, it just takes a person away from that job. Yep, yep. And uh, I suppose you, it's, you can easily adjust the dose on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yep. basically, just on that wee screw oh, there, yeah. yeah, just tell them how far, how far to press the plunger. How far it goes in, yeah, cool. Yep, and then with these ones, um, you can get way scales. Yes. Compatible yeah, yeah. So you, way scales on yeah, them so too. Yeah, on the back of them, you can get a separate module where there's a set of load bars under it, standard set of load bars under it, and um, yeah, and so like I guess like stud guys of that sort of stuff at the initial at docking, um, get to get that first weight when they're putting the tags in. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's just a module that sits on the back of them. Yep. And yep. we've also got a, a different one for merinos as well. It has no rollers on the back there. They have two spray units, so they get spray on the back end on the sort of around. Oh yeah. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh cool. Now we're pretty excited to try this out. The the tipper. So the. the the one we used last year was the first year we've ever used a tipper and I don't think I'd ever go back to one without a tipper, it's, um, yeah. it's so good, yeah, it's real easy to use and just puts the lambs on their feet every time, so yeah. yeah. yeah the, the tippers do work and it just saves having to pull them out and get them on their feet, the last thing you want them to do after the tails come off is um, have them land them straight down on the dirt. Yeah, dump them on the ground and yeah. in, in, in the dirt, yeah. The tipper does guarantee that they're going to land on their back feet and they're off. Yeah, exactly, yep, yep. No, cool to hopefully put this to work in the next week or so. So these hoggets, uh, we'll run through them. Uh, a breed of our ewes is a Perindale based flock. Essentially, for the last three years, we've been putting a, a Kelso across them, which is a mix, it's composite breed. So it's a mix between uh, Romney, Texel, East Frisian, and Finn. Um, and the main reason for that was to increase the fertility of our flock. We thought we were kind of hitting the ceiling of around, around, around about that 160-165% uh, scanning percentage so we wanted something a bit more fertile um, because we'd, we'd put some dual purpose texel uh, through the flock before just after we came here so we've been here nine years um, yeah and, and I'm stoked with these hoggets like they so these are the ones that were mated on kale um, and they've been on kale right the way through from before mating till just now well they've, they've just finished um, so yeah, pretty stoked with them really, their condition, um, everything, their size, their frame, uh, 57.2 kilo average, they're not overly fat, they've got a really good frame, um, so that that should help us with uh, dystochia and making sure that there's no lambs getting stuck. Um, so yeah, we, we just pulled out a few, there's only a race full to, to crutch really, so it's not too bad. Um, and then, yeah, next week they'll get shorn. And then we're going to take some fecal egg samples as well and test them. I'll test them this afternoon. So when they come in for shearing, if they need a worm drench, uh, I just want to see what their worm burden's like. They haven't been drenched since mating, so they've been on clean feed essentially all the way through. I just want to make sure that uh, we're still looking pretty good worm-wise there. So we've just got a few. A few left to do, not too many. Yep, and then uh, they can just start taking them back to their paddock. Come on ladies, go toilet so I can pick it up. So 58 kilo average, they averaged. Um, yeah, pretty stoked with that. We're just gonna collect some fecal samples. So we've got three, I think three, three at the moment. So just need a few more. Just do a mob bulk sample, see what they're at, where they're at. So we've got the sample, chuck that in the fridge. And now I've just got to shoot up and well, I've still got lambing beets to do. Uh, I checked the cows this morning, but we've got to go feed them some hay and baleage and across these hoggets back over the road. So we're just going to shoot up and yeah, 
feed some hay and bailers to the heifers and the mixed stage cows that are currently calving. So just feeding these heifers first, uh, first and second calving heifers some hay, a wee bit of bailer, shifted their break this morning. So they're on pretty well tight rations now um, until they calve and then they'll get shed off and go on to some better feed. But we just, um, yeah, just making sure their intake's not too high so they don't get too fat. So then we, they don't have any issues with just oak here or stuck calves. And we've had that before and it's not a very nice, uh, not a very nice time. So right, off to feed the mixed stage cows. Couple of poles are looking good. They uh, not no been knocked over by the deer, which is good. But I don't know if any have sprouted. I haven't actually had a had a close look. So. so up here with the mixed age cows, these are the ones that haven't calved yet. There's a few scattered around this hill paddock that have calved. One, two, three, four, five. There, there's two more over here, and then these are the ones I've shed off. Uh, just struggling though, a bit grumpy the cows, um, considerably worse than last year I wonder, it's just had them out the back and um, yeah, brought them in and, and put them straight in their calving paddock, had didn't have them behind a wire before before this so yeah, hopefully they'll settle down and we'll be able to tag some calves but I've only tagged about half of them at the moment but we'll show you that in another video, um, yeah so just fed them a bit of a part of ba bale of baleage and a whole bale of hay and then, yeah, they'll pick away at this paddock for another couple of days. And then I'll flick you around. Got a fence already set up in this paddock here. Uh, cox foot ready to go. Um, yeah, water there. I've got a temporary trough in that one over there that they're all drinking out of. And then they'll jump into here. And I want to chuck the Dominator post driver on and then fix up this fence before they go in there. It's a bit iffy, so... Um, Got a few days to try and do that. Check on the lambs in the lamb shed. Hello, boys and girls. How are we? You all right? You got your muesli? Got your water? Drinking milk? Looking good, aren't you? Looking good. What do you want to say to the people? Hmm? I don't know. I just want to sniff you. Hmm? Anyone? Oh, hello. Hi. Who are you? No, you came camera shy. Okay. Well, they're stonking away in there. It won't actually be long until the first ones need to be weaned at uh, 15 kilos. So, which is good because, uh, yeah, margin's pretty tight on that. Well, there's no margin on lamb rearing this year with the price of milk powder and then the price of lambs the way they are. But, yeah. We still do it, try and reduce that bottom end, and um, yeah, try and increase our overall performance in the in the U-flock. Got Georgia here from school. What are we doing down here at the lease block? Uh -huh. Doing lambing beak. So these ones we're just going through now are the uh, early hill ewes, so early maternal, the skinny ones. So we brought these down a trailer a few videos back. They're, um, yeah, lambing's actually gone pretty well for these girls. There's a few light ones, a few small lambs. They're just obviously new, new nutrition was a bit pushed for these ones. These, yeah, so the skinny ones. Um, so there's, a, yeah, light, ute, light lambs, but um, they seem sappy enough and they've got plenty of shelter, so they should be all right. We're just gonna shoot across the road over here and grab some, uh, grab some, check on the better condition ones that we've kind of been shedding off. Yeah, getting there, aren't we? Yeah. So on this paddock here, that's where they were. Uh, we've just shifted all, all these ewes out of there. They were, they haven't lambed, or there's one one single in there that's just running between the paddocks. Um, and in here we've got one, two, three, four, five, five ewes that have lambed. So we'll give them a day to settle down, and then tomorrow we'll go and join them up with these ones in here, so they've all lambed. Um, so we're just kind of switching them between these two paddocks, 
And then any that lamb in here will go and get shed off into the one down the back there. So, seems to be working quite well. Um, first time I've done this, but we just wanna make sure that the ewes don't get too big, um, too fat, and yeah, have bearings and stuck lambs and all that, because they're in good nick, these ones. And you are not meant to be there, cheeky bum. We might have to go and grab you back in. You just pushed under the fence somewhere. So one of the last jobs before I go inside and do that peak a week counting, um, we're just going to cross these hoggets across the road. Because, look. Get the gate open, might help. Enlisted the help of Jean-Pierre from Ashley Gorge. He was just dropping back a set of harrows that he borrowed, so it's good to put him to work. Come on, Buttercup, lead the way. Blue! Blue! Well, I go. Right, that was easy. There's blue. Mm -hmm. Oh, whoosh. Pull a go. Pull a go, Alfie! Pull a go, cuz. Pull a go, cuz. That'll do! Pull a go. Pull a go, Alfie. Pull a go. Sit. Sit. Now that found a new worker. He's king. He'll put them in the paddock for me. The redundant dogs. Because. So safely back in the paddock. This is tall fescue, so it's cranking along at the moment. It's um, grown really, really well, so they'll graze these down, and then, yeah, some will actually get set stopped in here, so. Right, we'll go home and uh, test some poo. Right, the dog review time, so that's all the, dog, all the working dogs done. We've just got this little critter. Hey, Snowy. Come here, stop running around. Hey. So Snowy is about nine months old, purebred Jack Russell, aren't ya? Pretty cool little dog. Very smiley, likes hanging out, likes coming on the farm, don't ya? Just, just a good little companion dog, aren't ya? Good for the kids, lots of energy, same as them. Hey, uh, as commands go, he's got Snowy come, and that's about it. So, oh, and, yeah, I don't know. He, oh, we got him from good friends of ours, James and Maria, so they they were, that's where we got the terminal rams from, so the South Suffolk rams, and he was born on ram sale day. So whichever day that was, December the something or other, wasn't it? Dinner time, Snowy. Gonna do this fecal egg sample for these hoggets. Uh, got a whiskey, make sure I don't get that mixed up with sheep poo. You're gonna do a sample. And yeah, so just working out the dilution ratio, get it all mixed up, and we'll let you know how we get on. Chuck that in there, scoosh it round. A bit stinky. So is the poo. No, I haven't showed the sock lambs. So while I'm doing this, Jenna's living her best life. Oh. While I'm doing this, Jenna's living her best life over there with her little babies. This is a sock. They are so tiny. Tiny little things, there's two of them. This one is how many days old? Sunday. Sunday it came in, I think. Set a couple of doses of penicillin, so we'll see. <laughs> I was gonna wipe this on the floor with the videos watching me. No, you can't do that. No. YouTube land will tell you off. Oh no. Ah, oh, shit. Shit, I didn't mean to 
cucumbers. Come on. Oh yeah, bit of electrolyte. Wow. Oh yeah. Ground it with it. She doesn't have enough energy to digest her food, otherwise. She's coming right though, eh? She is, just, what, five, no, three days old? It's definitely the smallest lamb I've ever seen live this, this smallest living, whatever, you know what I mean. You only need a little bit of this, and then we'll give you some milk. I'll set them in there, it's all there and gone. I'm trying to suck your arm, Mum. That's because I put my hand there so she thinks. And then she latches on. Perfectly. Mum. <laughs> this one can't latch on by herself and she just sucks it, licks her nose. <laughs> like a lizard. Whereas the little one can latch on. You all can do that. Yeah, you are. You're just taking sweet time, aren't you? Yeah. So Jenna just asked what I'm expecting. I'm expecting the them to be pretty good, actually. So not uh, really not anywhere close to bit needing um, needing a drench. But as the pressure comes on for lambing, they will, uh, their immune system will get under pressure, so that's why we will give them a drench. But just curious to see how how they've progressed through the winter, really. So those fecal weed counts, I counted uh, five eggs in one slide and only a couple in the other. So five eggs uh, with a ratio of, I think it's 30 to 1, 150 eggs. Yeah, no big drama. So that's good confirms my suspicions that yeah they're all pretty well good um yeah so we'll leave this video here thanks for watching catch you in the next one bye yeah.